Time is absolutely more valuable than money. Today, we have Connor Steinbrook, who is the massive brain force behind this concept. And he has taught me so much in my year of business partnership with him. So I'm so excited to bring you his perspective on time, time management, and why it is of utmost importance before the dollars and cents, before your hourly wage, all of that, why time is the thing you really need to focus in on. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Jeremy Kane, Realtor Playbook, helping you win every single day at the game of real estate. If you're interested in chatting further, please book a call in the Calendly link below. We can talk about partnering with Connor, Mike Sherrard, and myself at the Wolfpack, or just a game plan call across company lines. I'm absolutely willing. Please give me a like and a subscribe if you find this information valuable. And let's dive in to time being the most valuable commodity on earth. Let's go. All right, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining me today. I have Connor Steinbrook, who is the founder of the Wolfpack uh, here at EXP, business partner of mine, great friend of mine, over 2,000 agents. Uh, and this guy is one of the most brilliant business minds I've ever heard. I didn't even know about business until I started listening to Connor on our weekly calls and stuff. So Connor, thanks so much for giving me some time and uh, chatting with us today. We're gonna talk about time being the most valuable commodity. And there is, like I said, no better person to kind of dive into this and understand this from a scientific uh, approach than anyone I've heard. So I'm super excited to bring him to you. Uh, so Connor, welcome. Thanks for thanks for hopping on. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How's everybody doing? And, and thanks for the good words. And uh, I hardly think that you didn't know anything about business. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, you're dominant in business. So well, don't want to say that, guys. Right. Business, so. <laughs> but bringing the science to it is absolutely um, life changing. So we're going to just start pretty basic. Why is time so important to business? Why is the most valuable commodity in our business, in our lives? Because time is finite. It, it's measurable, right? So you know, incomes can accelerate at different paces, right? So you can buy a stock and it can expand overnight, quadruple, but everything else is going to be variable for the most part. Time is every single person in this world has one second to 24 hours a day. It's all the same. Billionaires all the way down to individuals that don't have any money in the bank account, if we're comparing in the business world, all have 24 hours in a day. So it's so important to understand that those hours are your choice on what you do with them and what do hours turn into? They turn into money, relationships, and opportunities. So what most people in business struggle with is how they make decisions. And they usually make decisions based off dollars. They don't make decisions off value. And time has a relationship to value differently. And in business, we get paid for value that we bring to the marketplace. And in the job world, in the the employee world, you get paid for time. So you go to a company that's already got pre-constructed ideas and and systems and tasks that they need done that takes time from someone to do them. And then they hire you and pay you for their time. So you're getting a relationship between between time and the value that you're bringing to the company that was agreed upon ahead of time, if that makes sense. Now in the job or in the entrepreneurship space, there's zero relationship to your income and time. You could literally work 100,000 hours and lose $100,000 or a million dollars if you're not doing the right thing in business. So we get paid for the value we create for the marketplace. Now also, when it comes to how do you choose to take down opportunities, what do you do? you have to look at things in relationship between money and time. So for example, if I tell Jeremy, hey Jeremy, I'm gonna pay you $100,000 to sell my house. What do you think he's gonna do? He's gonna love, who doesn't wanna make 100 grand, right? And I'm gonna say, well, actually, it's gonna take you 5 million hours of work to do this because you're gonna have to fly to the moon or some ridiculous whatever, I'm just trying to make a point, to make a time to to dollar relationship. Now, if it took 5 million hours to make $100,000, now you're making less than minimum wage probably, if you crack that down to math wise, does it make sense anymore? So the most important thing that you guys need to think about to scale your business is, especially if you come from like the investment background or something like that is your time into a deal, how it relates to the dollars coming out to create a ratio of your hourly return for that, what you're doing, right? So whenever I look at how I make decisions in business, so I created, I ran a consulting company helping real estate investors and entrepreneurs, you know, years ago, like 2014, 15 or so. And I created a visual example called the decision triangle because I am doing so many sales calls and working with so many different things at the time. I had to figure out how to get people to see how to make decisions because that's, we're trying to get people to, to buy something, have a sale. Right. And so I realized people make decisions off of three things, time, money, and motion. Right. And so 
I created a, a, a triangle and put each one at each corner of it because as you train people, if you guys are leaders in your groups, people remember colors, images, pictures, stories, conversations, and jokes more than just the words that you say. They're gonna remember how you make them feel and they remember what they experienced as far as a visual. So I always create little visual examples, but the way that this works is <clears throat> if two people made the same amount on the same deal, 10K, 10K, one had to make more than the other one because the time invested in it. But the third part of decision-making is time and money relationship, but also emotional relationship. So to go back, actually uh, so shut that consulting company down for a number of emotional reasons, because, you know, for one, we were giving the same information, same set of systems and everything to the same people. A couple of our uh, clients went off and became multimillionaires, super successful, but because of personal responsibility, I realized in the consulting space, not many people will take what others do and go run with it, right? It's very frustrating. Some of you guys are team leaders. Some take what you teach them, they go crush it, others don't. And so my mentality in business is I wanna make a ton of money and I wanna help people make a ton of money and be successful. And if both don't match, I'm not doing it. So the stress I had of watching people underperform and not even opening up the systems that we gave them, I didn't wanna do that business anymore because I wanted people to actually win. And so what happened was I shut down a business that was probably a multiple six figure easy net business that was a very easy business to run not because of the money, not because of the time or the money, but because the way I emotionally felt about that business. And I didn't like that business anymore, the way that it was building out and the way I felt that it was going, if that makes sense. So this happens all the time in the world where people are gonna make decisions, not just off money, off time, but off emotion, energy, or the why, or their, their reason why they're living their life off a of principle. So, you know, you come into an ethical person, they may not say yes to something that makes them a million dollars just because the way that they see themselves and they're not going to break their own image and identity with themselves and that, that respect for themselves. So, but that's, that's how money and time relate to each other. Time is most important. So time management is the most important thing in your business for the most part, besides maybe communication. So, but also keep into consideration the third part of decision-making, which is the emotional side and the stress side. But that's kind of my take on all that. Yeah. And I can go into like a little bit more <laughs> deeper stuff if you want. But um, it's really important when you make your decisions going forward, guys. Don't just say, it looks like I'm gonna make X amount on this deal. Say, here's my expected profit. What's my expected time to do this transaction? Because that changes your profit big time, right? Because it has the relationship right. to time. And ask yourself how difficult stress-wise is this gonna be? Because if you're having to drive an hour and a half across town every day to this property, is it really worth the stress and the money? To, because you could trade your time to go get an easier deal closer to you, if that makes sense. Right. Every okay. time you drive, your your hourly rate goes down, right? Every time you hop in the car and do that. I've, I've heard stories about you running around grocery stores and getting food delivered and all that stuff. We don't have to dive into all that stuff, yeah. but absolutely. And I think in this time of a little bit of a market shift, right? Let's be real. Real estate has been gravy train for 10 years, Yeah. right? P agents don't even like I'm dealing with agents all of a sudden they don't even know what an inspection objection or inspection negotiation is <laughs> they're all confused it's yep. really great for my clients it's really bad for their clients um, but times of change are coming and I think if you really dial it in that time matters and whether you're you know, however you build your business, whether it's, you know, cold calling or whatever, that time invested to, you know, be successful in our industry is definitely changing right before our eyes. So this dive into time, and that's why, you know, I thought this was a great topic. So obviously time management is, is key, right? And how do you, you know, do you have some hacks for time management? What are some some ideas that we can help the audience with just kind of get on the right track thinking now not necessarily commission split and you know dollars earned but more usage of time as it relates to that yeah so so the first thing is like i want you i want to challenge you know everybody that's watching this like the belief on how you look at your business and, and time and money real quick and then i'll go into some ways to, to to be more efficient and free of time so the first thing is like Let's say Jeremy is doing a transaction right now and he can spend $5,000 on a mail campaign versus $10,000 to send the same mail campaign out, same mailers, but different company. Why would he choose 5,000 versus 10,000 if he's going to have the same result? Because he's spending less money, which means he has $5,000 less in expenses, which means net profit at the end of the year is higher. But I want you guys to start thinking about, you all understand that if you're flipping a house or doing a transaction, paying for you know uh, staging expenses and all sorts of things with the open house, 
let's do it with the fewest dollars possible. But you need to look at time as well, because if you did a project with 40K in expenses down to 30K, your profit's 10 more. But if you do a project or you're doing something throughout your day, fit quicker or faster or more efficient, let's say you used to do a task that took an hour to do, or let's say you're reading a book. It takes you an hour to read however many words or pages. Now you take a speed reading course. Now you can read that book twice as fast. So what used to take an hour to do, you now did in 30 minutes. So whatever the income producing rate of the income coming in for that activity, if you trade that 30 minutes back into an hour before, twice the result for what you were doing before. So time efficiency is income raising if you think of it in the same way. So when we save time, we are saving money and increasing the profits in our business because our time has a value to it, which has a dollar rate to it, right? So the first thing is, let's talk about like one of the first things that like a lot of high performance people understand, which is time compression. Now I said earlier, everybody has 24 hours in a day, but me, a lot of other high level entrepreneurs and people that understand compressing time, may have 27, 29, 30, 31, 35 hours in a day, depending on what we do. And the way that uh, top people do this is they compress time by doing two firsts or three for ones, right? Meaning doing two activities at the same time, multitasking essentially, right? So let's say I'm needing to work on my education today and I'm gonna listen to like a podcast or Jeremy's podcast, right? It could take an hour. So if I'm sitting at my desk or I'm sitting in my chair, reading a book for an hour, listening to a podcast, the time unit relationship is one unit in, one unit out for the one benefit in life, right? Now let's say I'm working on my fitness. I could go to the gym, just at the gym. And while I'm lifting, I could be listening to death metal, rap, whatever I wanna to listen to. So I'm getting one-to-one -one time unit relationship to one benefit in my life, which is busy building my body, but I'm wasting that time to be listening to a podcast or an audio. So instead of just running on the treadmill, daydreaming, why not listen to the audio tape or read or listen to the audio book that I was listening to while I was in my couch at home? So if I do these two things at one, I traded one hour to get the two results now. So I'm doing a two to one time compression activity, if that makes sense. And so I'm always trying to find three to one time compressions in my business because every time I can do three things in my life in one hour, I'm adding two hours to my day. So for example, one of the hobbies, so some people ask, you know, like at the pandemic, I weighed 230 pounds and now I weigh 172. So I've lost almost 60 pounds and they want to know how I did it. And I tell people I did it through fishing and they're like, that's doesn't even make sense. Right. But I don't fish like a normal person sitting in a chair with like a bobber in the water. I have a one mile lake that I carry a 50 pound Navy seal, basically backpack around on my shoulders while I go stand with this for hours and I carry it around the heat and I'm out there. So I'm getting my physical workout in. So I'm getting my fitness and all my cardio comes from literally standing and, and, and working at the uh, lake. Second thing is I'm getting my uh, education in. I'm listening to audiobooks the whole time. Third thing is I'm also planning, you know, what I'm also doing in my business, but I'm also what I'm doing is I'm getting my hobby time out. And one of the things I think a lot of people that get to high levels in business do that plants a bad seed in people that want to see them on the path to become that person they're following is they don't show the enjoyment of their lifestyle. They don't show that they can still have hobbies and still enjoy the things they do. They make people think they work 24, 25 hours a day, right? So when you look at that, you're getting hobby time in, education time in, fitness time in, and also, you know, you're getting your spiritual time in, depending on what you believe and how you run your life. You're out there in the world, you're not inside, you're out there in earth, right? So you're getting, so what I'm doing is I'm compressing time. And every time I do something where I'm getting two to three relationship time units to one I'm putting out, my day increases. And if I have 35 hour days or 28 hour days, and I'm competing against people that are in my same industry, same space, they're doing 24 hour days, I'm gonna crush them every freaking time, right? So that's one way you guys can increase your, your business. The second thing is, or time in business. The second thing is, time leakage. Now, time leakage happens when you're not preparing or planning your day. So what successful people do is they plan and audit their day. So before the day starts, they've rehearsed their day. They have visualized their day. They've seen how their day is going to play out. They know their pre set meetings. For example, I knew I had this podcast with Jeremy. This is part of my day. I knew it ahead of the day before I started the day. So you're going to have set tasks that are already in the calendar. And then you're going to have filler tasks that fill in the, in the day between. So let's say I have five different meetings today one to two, two to three, and there's a gap, five to six, and earlier in the day I have a meeting, right? So I'm gonna have to do certain things throughout the middle of the day. So you need to have ideas of things in your business that need to be done that have pre, uh, ahead of time, time amounts attached to them, for example. Like I have lists of things that are five to 15 minute tasks, maintenance task lists, low, low leverage activity lists over here on my right-hand side. Then I have tasks that take like 30 minutes to an hour. 
or one to two hour tasks. So let's say I have a meeting that like say Jeremy's podcast, he contacts me today and he's like, actually, man, can we move it to a different time? Well, I have this hour blocked out. So I plan my day ahead of time to be efficient, but what happens if a change of the day happens? This is where a lot of entrepreneurs get caught off guard where they don't know how to instantly not waste that time. So what happens is if they haven't prepared ahead of time, knowing that they have filler activities to go in right when a canceled appointment happens, they start guessing or trying to figure out what to do, right? What should I do at this time now? Should I do an email? Should I make a phone call? And they're going back and forth in their mind on how to take the risk of that time that they want to spend right now. What's the best and highest use of it instead of knowing exactly what they're going to do ahead of time, which is if a meeting goes, I'm moving straight to these three tasks, right? So many times what slows us down today is not knowing what we're going to do. Many people can kill well, meaning when they know exactly what to do, they just go and do it. They can execute well. It's figuring out what they need to do and filling in time spots. I have 30 minutes here, what's the best use to fill in, right? So by planning ahead of the day, you're gonna make sure you're avoiding this. And by creating a list of different activities with different time amounts to it, you can fill them in throughout your day. Now, at the end of the day, what successful people do, and the more successful you are, you audit not just on a daily level, but on an hourly level or on a half day level, which is what happened through the day. So you're planning your day ahead of time. And at the end of the day, you're reviewing your day. So you're saying, okay, I hopped on the podcast with Jeremy. I, I bombed, it went horrible. Why did it go bad? Maybe I wasn't prepared. Maybe I was in a, I had a deal that fell out right before it and it was an emotional uh, lapse in my mind and I was distracted, right? So when we have wins, we say, why did the win happen? Can we do it again? Is this repeatable? Is it scalable? Can I make the result happen more than once? And then can I systematize it? How can I do it better? Or was it an accident? Was it something that shouldn't have happened if I did this 10 out of 10 times, would this have happened in a negative way, nine out of 10, or did I just get lucky this one out of 10? So you wanna look at results with results variance, meaning did this happen because it was the actual thing that's actually supposed to happen or was this a variance result, right? So I try to do things that can, re so when we have a win, we try to repeat it. If we can do it three times, we try to scale it. And if we can start to scale it, we systematize it and that becomes a business or a marketing channel, right? Then on the negative side of things, when they're a failure, first of all, there's nothing as a failure in your business. So if I come on to an appointment to recruit an agent and they say, no, I didn't have a failure. I gained information, I improved and I had a yes or no, right? So I had a result, that's a win. The, the win is that you showed up and did an activity in your business, not the win is if someone said yes or no to a sale. Start focusing on how to put time in your business as the win or loss, not do you have the result that you won or yes or no. The time is the win or not, if that makes sense. Now, when I look at auditing things, why did it go bad? What did I do wrong? Was it the person, you know, and, and how to do better? So plan and audit your day, okay? Now, that's, Couple ones I want to go over. Do you want me to keep going? I got a couple other things I could go on, or I don't know how much you want to go. Yeah, we can. That's. I mean, that's awesome. And I think as it relates to the real estate agent, if we can take this mindset to our clients, that's when the real duplication starts to happen for that piece, just in the client to to agent relationship. I have a Connor and I are an RTA syndicate, and there was someone on there that was going to do a for sale by owner. Right. And I reached out and I said, Hey, she was in a different state. I'm not licensed to sell real estate in that state. I reached out to her and said, Hey, these are the things. And she was like, okay, okay. And she was like kind of collecting data of, you know, my mindset on the market and what she had to do to successfully sell her house on her own. And then I stopped and I said, you know, let's call her Laura. That is actually her name. I was like, Laura, how much money? can you make in the 20 hours that you're willing to put into selling this house? And she said, I guarantee you, I could close five calls for her business, netting $20,000 a piece. I literally was like, okay, well, if you want to not pay someone $30,000 or the commissions came out to $30,000 to sell your home and trade 20 hours, instead of making $100,000, like, where's the disconnect here? And she goes, you know what? Damn right. She's like, find me somebody that's a killer and I'll, I'll get it done. And so my ability to take what Connor has taught me through our group and just slow it down and give a different perspective is a $70,000 difference, yeah. right? And I asked her yesterday, she's got her house under contract now and, and with an agent, which I will, get a referral fee from and that's great. So that hour of my time was absolutely worth it. Uh, but she, I asked her how she was doing with her time. 
because I was holding her a little accountable, right? That's kind of the Arate way is like help somebody else get something accomplished. And she said she's made $150,000 in the time that she saved saving her home. And it's 10 days in. <laughs> so that's where you can kind of take it as an agent, you know, and, and make it helpful for your clients and educate people. And that's, that's awesome that you, you kind of have that perspective, Connor. And, and I definitely would not have had that question had I not uh, <laughs> been on your masterminds and your trainings. Awesome. Love to hear it. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, think about like, so like you guys really need to think about what you do throughout your day. So think about this, like how many people say they don't have time to do something? I don't have a time. I, I'm running out of time. There's no time to do this, but everybody we just talked about has the same amount of time of the day. Everybody has the same amount of time of day. So instead of saying you don't have any time, what you should challenge yourself is say, I don't have any time because I'm using my time incorrectly or I'm not using my time wisely because you're wasting your time. If you took all the hours on TV that you're spending, all the time on, cell, on, on phone calls that you're not getting in off quickly. So like phone management, some of the things that we teach our agents here at Wolfpack, like get in and off the phone quickly, get the accomplished result that you're trying, but don't let phone calls drag out because what people don't understand is letting a 12 minute phone call go 15 minutes, that's three extra minutes. Letting one minute phone call go three minutes but when you get to a higher level in business, when you're doing with a lot of deals and, and uh, a lot of things happening, those one or two minute time leakages add up across the day, across the year, and you compound across the year. This could be six multiple six figures in your business, depending on what you're doing. So you need to start looking at, not that you don't have a time. If you're saying to yourself, I don't have enough time, what you should say is my time management's not where it needs to be. How do I get more efficient and start working on your time management? The second thing is start looking at being more efficient with what you're doing. Talking about this, some example, Jeremy, you shouldn't be mowing your yard, guys. You shouldn't be doing basic tasks in your business. If you're doing anything that's repeatable or repetitive, you should have a virtual assistant for three to five dollars an hour doing this for you. Even if you work at McDonald's, I think I heard minimum wage is like fifteen dollars an hour or something now, which is insane because last time I looked it was like seven. And so let's say you're paying someone five dollars an hour, but you make fifteen working minimum wage, you're having a ten dollar net return on your time trading to move yourself out of that activity, so you can do higher and best use activities with your time. So no matter what, it always makes sense to pay someone. So for example, you know, a lot of people don't want to order Uber Eats and pay $35 to have, you know, fast food sent to the house. But if you, even if the food restaurant, let's say Taco Bell's right around the corner, it still takes five to 10 minutes to get in your car, to drive there, to wait in line, to drive home. Let's say you spend 30 minutes, but your hourly income is $200 an hour. So hundred of that would be time value losses for you to go do that because you could be doing something to build that business income, but you're paying someone an extra 10 or $12 to bring it to you. So this is where a lot of people get stuck in the middle class trap mentality is they, they, they mow their own yard instead of pay people to do it. They go get their own food instead of have it brought to them. They go shop on their own instead of buy it on there and have it come to them. They, they go to places and not have things come to them which is why EXP has become the most dominant brokerage in the world right now, because we don't have to go somewhere. Our opportunities at our house. So I run an international organization of thousands of agents from this room. Essentially, I don't have to drive to a building, no time expense, no dollar expense, no gas expense, no emotional stress and expense, right? So start thinking about your time more than money. And it's going to really start increasing your money in your bank account when you start guarding your time and not focusing on dollars, which is what is so important to understand that a lot of people figure out later in business, um, but not usually early on. Yeah. I mean, with gas prices, right? Like it's, it's getting more expensive than this example that Connor just threw out that I've heard before. Um, because it's, it's at the end of the day, it's net profit, right? It's, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you make a million dollars and you have to spend a million dollars to get there, right? Your net profit is zero, just like the person who doesn't have a job. So I like to. I don't know how much time we're going to do on this one, but let me add one more thing here and we'll go as long as you need, Jeremy, but yeah. I want to, I want to just something that came up on my mind and this actually brings in Mike Sherrard, our, our other partner. So you guys know, Mike, you know, other head of the Wolfpack here with us. Um, so he talks about at your Denver event, remember y'all had that big event in Denver uh, that we flew out to and he gave his speech and he was talking about time and relationship to marketing. And so a lot of people understand time relation and income streams, meaning active income, they trade their time to go to do it. And when time stops, their income stops versus residual income, meaning time traded once income comes in reoccurring over and over and over. But you agents right now start and all you watching this as business owners you need to start thinking of how is your marketing 
relating to time in relationship to you know what you're doing in your business. So proactive versus reactive marketing. So proactive marketing would be, or proactive business building would be like reaching out to someone, cold calling them, door knocking, something that's got that one-to-one -one time trading uh, relationship to it. But you can't knock 24 hours a day, right? It's impossible. You can never go knock a door 24 hours a day. That's why not in Texas. <laughs> probably not even knock an hour a day. And sometime I'll tell a story about how I passed out door knocking in someone's yard, but that's for a different podcast. Yeah. But um, I, I really did. But for the most part, I was literally sprawled out in the yard. But anyways, to get back to what I was talking about. So with online lead generation, what Mike's explaining is, how he explains it is, you can have 24 hours a day of marketing to brought to you over 24 hours a day so you can compress a day because the time relationship to if you trade your time to cut, create podcasts like this or videos and put them on the internet instead of trading 15 minutes to knock on a door or talk to someone I could trade 15 minutes to create a video that could go talk to thousands of people because if I have 5,000 people spend 15 minutes watching a video the 15 minutes of my life traded into the world brought back 5,000 time relationships of of the units equivalent to it, right? So it's leverage. And so if you have people watching you, you get enough content on the internet. So by now I think I've got like between all the different channels and things, probably 1200 or more content pieces on the internet. That's all bringing business to me in a reactionary strategy. I've invested my time once. So once Jeremy, I invest the time today to do this podcast once, if you're watching this, you're investing your time back. Hopefully you gain some value of it to go invest in your business to increase your income. So you're trading your time to us to gain value, to increase your income tomorrow, if that makes sense. But right. it's just it's just so important to understand that social media, reactive marketing, putting something out there for someone to come across to contact you is going to get you out there 24 hours a day plus however many hours a day people are watching on top of that. Because you could have 50, 80, 100 hours of videos being watched a day so that's again how to increase time because you're leveraging technology and you're leveraging systems you're leveraging social media less time on your side higher time return from the clients you're trying to connect with right uh, man what a what a lesson there and in, in time yeah. and it's just i always do this i have to go back into week into month into year and see like where my time leakage is and how that's gone you know it's it's a perfect example on the apple iphone right they send you how much screen time you've had. And so when I tell someone, oh, I'm so busy, I don't have any time. And that thing comes in Sunday and says I was on my phone for eight hours and a average of eight hours a day. Granted, I'm in business and real estate and some of that's that, but I'd be lying to you if I was on my phone doing business, doing productive activities for eight hours a day. So it's, it's a lesson for all of us to continue to audit ourselves, to continue to improve because if you get in that mindset, you will separate yourself. So thanks so much for that, Connor. And uh, where can people find you if they want some more Connor knowledge here? Yeah, so I don't know, maybe I'll give you something later because I got a bunch of stuff coming out that I haven't announced yet, but um, okay. you can probably add it later. Uh, I will be all over the internet here pretty quickly, but um, you guys can go check out like what, like one of my original YouTube channels that kind of put us uh, out there was from an investor space, uh, an industry I came from uh, called Investor Army. You can go check me out there. Uh, my Instagram is not so great, but it's about to get a lot better. We're putting a little time into it now. So you guys can just go find me at Connor underscore Steinbrook and anywhere on Facebook or just reach out to Jeremy and say, if you want to connect with us. And then, um, I'm gonna challenge you guys with one last thing as I leave here, I want you guys to figure out right now, if you don't know what the hourly expense of your time is, that's a big problem in your business. So figure that out today and find out what your time is worth. And then what I want you to do is I want you to figure out how much your television costs. I want you to figure out how many hours a week you spend on your television. Because when I ask people, how much did you pay for your TV? They say 500 to $1,500. And I said, no, you didn't. You probably paid 500 to a million dollars, 500K. I want you to calculate how many hours of time wastage goes into your TV, put in the calculator and times it by what your hourly worth is and keep a trash can by you. So you, when you throw up <laughs> and then when you realize why you don't have the money in your bank account is because the television in your living room didn't cost $500, it cost a million, you're going to stop watching it. And that's one of the biggest killers of businesses. If you want to build a big business, guys, turn the TV off, get off the wastage of your time and put in your business. And you're going to see your income grow. But um, I'm that, guys, if you learned something today and uh, yeah. reach out to us, if you want to work with Jeremy and I, Mike and all of us uh, with the Wolfpack and find out more about what we do, just get with Jeremy. They're crushing it top producer, couldn't, couldn't have yeah. a better guy to work with. And uh, we'll meet you on Zoom and talk about potentially how it would look to have you work with us and what that would look like. Yeah, masterminds more than, you know, five times a week with this guy, just dropping superior knowledge among Mike Sherrard and, and the others. So thanks so much, Connor. You're more than welcome. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.